the Devils. They got back to answer more goddamn questions. First, we got a few order questions. One, two, four order questions, goddammit. First one's from Peyton Carter. Hey, J Dog, have you heard of the band Hellripper? If so, what is your opinion on them? Yeah, Hellripper is really good. Uh, they were initially on Craig's label back when he was doing his label. Um, he put out just, I think there's their EP and maybe a compilation of their demos and stuff. That was good. And then, wasn't it, was it Central Media or Season of Mist that got signed by a big boy label? Uh, what is that album called? Uh, I picked it up. Uh, just the CD I got. But yeah, it's fucking great. Toxic Holocaust style fucking thrash. Um, yeah, they, that was real good. Like, 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 uh, I bought it. That's for goddamn sure. So yes, I, I definitely think they're a good band. Uh, from... Erismo Antonio Solis Martinez from California. Goddamn long ass fucking name there, brah, brah. Hey, J Dog, are you a two minute Drake fan? Eh, not really. You should try to release. Let's start a porn. Let's start a porn in the name of Gore on vinyl. That, that's a that's a band. It's like I'm sure I've heard it, but I don't know if I have. At the same time, it was a lot of those big Gore bands were getting a little fucking silly by the time that. Um, like, I wouldn't be able to identify it, I'm sure, but uh, I recall not caring for it. They did some split sound and shit like that. Uh, and what are your favorite gore grind bands? Favorite gore grind bands? Well, for, for sure, the first two Carcass. I consider those the first two gore grind, gore grind records of all time. Um, and I, don't, I don't consider those death metal records. I consider those definitely gore grind, especially with the uh, fucking... Uh, Pitch shifting vocals and shit. That was just that was Norgren. That wasn't death metal. Uh, death metal. Then they became more of a death metal band on Acroticism, Tools of the Trade, and then a melodic death and roll band on fucking um, on Heartwork, and then just kind of like death and roll, death rock, and Swan Song. But first two Carcass would definitely be my favorites. Uh, Empatago. I would say that that is definitely war grind. It also fucking sounds like fucking nobody. General Surgery Necrology, the EP for sure. Uh, I, I like everything by General Surgery, even the comeback shit. You know, they did like left hand pathology, a bunch of seven inches split with counting, 12 inch split with counting medical examiners. Another full length was the Corpus, something like that. I can't say I know them, no, but every time I listen to them, I thoroughly do enjoy them. Um, but Necrology, that's like fucking, that's as good as goddamn Carcass. I mean, and that's. To me, as far as EPs, that's the greatest fucking board grind EP ever fucking recorded. Uh, very easily, too, I would say. Um, Hemorrhage. Hemorrhage of the Kings. Then, goddamn it, as far as a full catalog, Hemorrhage is uh, my favorite board grind band of all time. Like every single album. And they're all, albums are all board grind. Uh, favorite album by them is specifically is Anatomical Inferno. That was the first album I picked up when it came out. But every album's extremely good. And Medic Cult's a close second for me. Uh... First regurgitate, effortless regurgitation. Um, that's a great gore grind record. The rest of the regurgitate stuff is yeah, it's good, but not as good as that. Uh, Discord Mexico. I'd say those would probably be my. I'd say probably my faves. Yeah, favorite gore grind releases bands. Um, am I forgetting somebody? That's completely fucking obvious. Yeah, the thing there fucking is. I mean, pharmacists is peeking their head right on in there, goddammit. That's for sure, but I'm just not throwing them in because they're still fucking young bucks. So, um, but they're definitely creeping on in there, and not far behind them is that goddamn miasmatic necrosis. Whew, can't go wrong with that. That goddamn LP was fucking phenomenal. I must say so myself. Next goddamn question is from Evan Wilson. Yo, j Dog, throw some extra stickers if you have any. No problem, brah, brah. I'm an everyday devil listener. That's what I like to hear. I got two questions for the channel. What state do you think has the best metal scene? Question mark. What's your favorite band logo? Thanks, Hales. Band logo, I kind of answered, uh, but I don't really have a favorite. But I mean, some I like is I like the Mortician logo a lot. I like the Necrovore logo a lot. Empatago's logo is cool as fuck. Uh, some of the Nunslaughter logos are cool. Some were hit or miss. So they have like more fucking 50 different goddamn logos. Um, I think I gave a little more elaborate list, of them, but I have kind of answered that. But uh, those are some ones that pop right in my mind that I really, really like. Um, and who has the best metal states? Um, metal scene? Uh, I mean, well, the thing is, it's a little hard for me to say. 
I guess how I would gauge it is either going by bands that came from that state or um, how many orders I see go there. So that's judging it by, you know, how many metalheads are potentially there because that's how many people could order from there. Uh, because most of them, I haven't been there to see shows. Like, I've never been to L.A. to see a show. But if I had to guess, uh, it would probably be the, be the bigger stage just by default. And I, I say that, again, just because... Um, Seems like a lot of bands came out from there, and we also get a lot of orders from there. For example, we get a shitload of orders from California. We get a shitload of orders from New York. A lot of bands came out of there. We get a shitload of orders from Texas, um, Florida. Yeah, I would say those are probably, uh, yeah, probably those. And then other two that seem like we get very, very often is, you know, Illinois. You know, you got Chicago. And it seems like we get a lot of orders from Arizona, too. Um, I would say those probably, then. Yeah, that's not a specific answer, but that's that's all I have to base it off of. Because like I said, you take fucking Florida. I've never been to a show down there. So a ton of bands came from there. We get a lot of orders from there. So I, it's got to have some type of scene, right? That's how. That's the only way I can base it off of. Dario Lucas. Yo, J Doggy Dog. Question: What's your opinion on bands putting out fifteen tracks on an album? Question mark. Personally, becomes becomes boring and repetitive. Cheers from Canada. I mean, <laughs> I, I, that's kind of a weird fucking statement. That, but so I guess you don't like fucking Recapture Faction, right? That's goddamn more than like a lot of the grind albums. Fucking World Downfall. Uh, first two Napalm Deaths for sure have well over fucking fifteen. Um, Every mortician, with the exception of like Zombie Apocalypse and House by the Cemetery, they all have well more than 15. So I guess you don't want to get, I guess everything's boring and repetitive by the Tish for you. Um, most grindcore bands in general, like you take just a random record like Nazem, Inhale, Exhale, great record by the way, goddamn it. I mean, fuck, the album I just mentioned before, Regurgitate, Effortless Regurgitation. I mean, what, the, what I think it has like 60 songs, doesn't it? Like, I think it legitimately has 60. It's to quote my fault, is it 40 or 60? It's a shitload, I know that. Because their songs are really, really short. So does that count? Um, but a band that has, like, let's say, normal so normal length songs, three to four minutes. Like, you know, bands like, like a band like Slayer or Cannibal Corpse or whatever. Like that, that, those are pretty standard normal length songs, right? Yeah, not too many bands do have, like, and especially if it's like an actual album, though, there's bonus track bullshit and stuff. Does do any of them have more than 15 songs? Generally speaking, no. I would say no, right? And I think most of that's going to be time restraints because now, if for LP-wise, it's going to have to be a triple LP, and for a CD-wise, we can only fit, what is it, the max minutes you can fit on a CD? Is it, what, like 71 minutes, 72 minutes? I know it's something around there. It's like right around the 70-minute mark. Uh, so, you know, if you have five-minute songs on average and uh, you have 15 songs, well, that's fucking uh, 75 minutes right there. So it wouldn't fit. So I'm sure a lot of bands, that's probably why. Um but no, I, I'd have to disagree because, again, yeah, the bands that do have more than 15 tracks, it's a better report. It's just because they have shorter songs. It's the only goddamn reason. So, uh, yeah, I got to kind of, I mean, so fucking, yeah, like I said, World Downfall, that's, that's boring and repetitive. Because you don't like that first epitago either, goddamn it. <laughs> so there's a lot of good, great fucking shit with more than 15 songs. So what the fuck you're looking at, bra bra? Anyways, that was it for the goddamn order questions. Let's pick it up to the next video in line, which is the Sarcophago INRI, INRI album. Photo blows away, blows away the destruction ones. That guy did. Uh, insolent, insolent bastard. Eighty five. What is your favorite Bathory album? Question marks. Uh, for me, it's easily the first album, Bathory, Bathory, and my favorite uh, Bathory song of all time is uh, Necromancy. Bloodfire Death for me. God, goddamn right. I feel the same about people not supporting bands or pirating music. Um, Bloodfire Death was the last album I liked. I like it very much. Uh, yeah, so favorite for me is a self titled, followed by um, Under the Sign, then The Return, then Bloodfire Death. After that, I pretty much didn't like anything, to be honest with you. Requiem's kind of a cool thrash record, I guess. Doesn't sound like Bathory. Um, the octagons and shit, I'll be completely honest with you, I didn't really listen to them. Um, Twilight of the Gods, I remember being 
vir virtually fucking, I, I shut it off. Uh, what's the one right after, um, before Twilight of the Gods? Uh, Hammerheart. I remember not liking that, but I remember also stumbling in one time. Somebody had it on, and it was, I was like, what are we listening to? Like, this is Bad Bath or Elder. I was like, Viking House, huh? Like, Which one is this? And they said it was Hammerheart, because it was parts. I was like, I was like, this is actually, I walked, parts I walked in, I thought, actually thought were pretty good. But when I first checked it on my own, I fucking shut it off. Or at least I recall, or at least I call not liking it. But Twilight of the Gods, I actually re-put on in the last year again in the shop. And I'm like, this is just bad. I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it just sucks. It all around sucks. It's a fucking total puss album. Uh, downgrade for goddamn sure. I'm like, it just fucking blows. I, was like, I don't know why everybody likes this fucking crap. Um, but I, I'd have to go back and listen to Hammerheart. I don't think I ever officially went back and listened to that one. So. Uh, you and Brisket, dog, do you like the band Sadistic Drive? I thought it was okay, but I only gave it one listen too. So a newer band, you know, it's. Not too much shit hits me around the first listen, but I mean, it was solid death metal. You know, it's got the goddamn cannibal riffs and shit. That was cool. Metal Rush. Is a signed picture that's ruined? I got a couple of them signed by Dark Funeral and showed some friends. Some said it was insanely cool, but a couple said, way to go, it's ruined. And one of idiot said they scribbled on your record, bro. Well, for starters, to me, like, um, I don't know if it's ruined. I never tried because I have a lot of my picture that's signed, too. Hell, I brought my Possessed Seven Churches and had Becerra sign it when I did that interview. Um, is it ruined? I, I don't know. I was like, I wasn't going to listen to it anyways, to be honest with you. I have like two or three different versions of the LP, two different CDs, maybe, shit, maybe three different pressing CDs. I'm not listening to a picture of this. I'm putting it on my wall. It's fucking, it's almost like a poster, you know what I mean? But it's commemorated on the actual record and signed by Becerra. Like, that's not, it's not ruined to me. To me, it's like a trophy. It's like a fucking piece of cool metal history signed by the guy. So, yeah, if you have Lord Aramon and Caligula and shit sign your stuff. Hell, I never met those guys. I would like to, though. Um, I would have them sign one of my Darth Funeral pictures, too. So I, I think your broski's just, uh, sounds like some Indian idiots that probably don't even clock records, just downloading shit. So their opinion's irrelevant, anyways. So yeah, I wouldn't worry about it, Barbara. I highly doubt that's what your, your version of what you're probably listening to. I guess it's possible. But you probably more than likely have it on a CD or something as well. At least I know I always do. Andrew Gabriel, J Dog, what do you prefer, the Swedish death metal sound or the Finnish death metal sound? Uh, the Swedish death metal sound. I mean, in general, um, I like more Swedish bands than Finnish bands. The uh, Swedish bands tend to get got a little bit more repetitive. Uh, that's for damn sure. But uh, it was always more upbeat and more entertaining to me. Uh, a lot of the Finnish shit just was really fucking boring. Um, there's some that I like a lot, but it's just a lot of it is just like, ah, it's just... They went more for kind of like the uh, doomy death approach. And for me, I just, yeah, for a lot of times I was just bored. So. It, uh, though, this is pretty fucking funny. Uh, not surprised to hear this at all. Adam Torres, J Dog, have you heard the new Morbid Saint question mark? Just another example of classic bands that shouldn't be making comeback albums. I have not, but I told you about, like, when I said I was going to maybe possibly interview him at Milwaukee Metal Fest until so I saw the goddamn, what the singer looked like. Fuck that. And I, that was right. I, if I saw, I got reminded, because I did hear that they put out an album. I That's exactly what I assumed. To be honest, I, I don't think it ever came in through Hells, so I kind of forgot about it. Um, if it did come in through Hells, I would have checked it out. But the thing is, that's automatically what was in my goddamn mind, was exactly what you said. I'm like... It's probably going to suck. It's another we're back band by a bunch of washed up geezers. And at best, it's just watered down from where they um, from where they uh, started off. At worst, and which is most of the time, it sounds nothing like what the band started off as. Like they'll be playing like Morbid Saints back and they're playing like fucking Municipal Waste style thrash. It's like, what the fuck is this, man? That's not what Municipal Waste was. I mean, that's not what Morbid Saint was. Municipal Waste, that's fucking party thrash, right? Morbid Saint, that was more the fucking violent goddamn sick thrash. There's a huge goddamn difference. Um, so that does, you, you say that, that that doesn't surprise me at all. It's one of those, if it came through, I was like, I'll put this on, but I'm expecting it to suck. That's what I expected with Possessed Revelations, and I expect that with the Pentagram Chili. Both of those proved me wrong, though. I, I liked both of those very, very much so. So, But when Possessed, like, we're doing a new album, I'm like, oh, this ought to be good for a laugh. Um, but I put it on, I was like, holy shit, this is fucking awesome. <laughs> And I thought the exact same thing, yeah, with Pentagram Chili. They put out that Met the Malice album, and it was fucking fantastic. 
So every now and again, uh, the, the uh, they prove the dog wrong but most of the time. Yeah, we're back. And it's like, dude, this just stay gone. This shit sucks. Matthew Hamilton, big dog, curse the gods album. Come on, bra bra. It's eternal devastation. Just busting your balls. You got a huge collection. I don't think I said curse the gods album. I said curse the gods song. I think that's probably the best fucking destruction song of all time. I know it's not. I know it's not. They don't have an album called Curse the Gods. I'm fully aware of that. Uh, Drew Trucifer. J Dog, who'd you pick? Who'd you pick in a shootout between Witch Trap and Evil Army? Both are solid as fuck, in my opinion, but Witch Trap has done more shit and is very consistent. I don't know about what I mean. You mean by a shootout? But who do I who do I prefer? Who do I like more? It's actually a really goddamn good one. Um, I don't know, but I'll, I'll just go out and say this. It's funny you say that because, for example, Evil Army only done one full length, right? If you want to even call it a fucking full length, you know, Slayer gets away with calling Rain of Blood a full length, so we'll call Evil Army the self titled Evil Army a full length. The rest they just have EPs and shit. Um, Hell's at the privilege of putting a lot of them out, right? Not all of them, but a lot of them. That, I would say, that first Evil Army, that's up there with Toxic Holocaust for me. And just, just, just in general, as I would say one of my favorite thrash albums ever. I gotta do my fucking top, do my top 20 death metal albums. I gotta do my top thrash albums. If I do my top thrash albums, for example, I think a lot of people would be surprised. They're gonna want to see all just complete classics. And don't get me wrong, there's definitely some classics in there for me too. Like Slayer, Shadow Mercies. Definitely in there, and and and, and for starters, if I just so you know, if I do a top thrash, there's not gonna, there's, it's, I'm not doing this this silly ass cheese ball fucking separation between speed metal and thrash. I'm gonna combine it as one. That's that's even that's I think that shit's fucking ridiculous. Yes, I see there's a pinch of a difference, but it's fucking thrash for fuck's sake. But anyways, uh, there'll be classics in there for sure. Don't get me wrong, but uh. Like, Toxic Holocaust, Evil Never Dies is 1,000% in there. And to be honest, like I said, I'd have to go through my uh, collection and eliminate ones and put back. But I think Evil Army, Evil Army would be in there. That self-titled full length. That is a banger of bangers. And that is, that sends a lot of the fucking goddamn uh, thrashers home on a stretcher. For example, like, even like Municipal Waste, going back to listen to them, yeah, I do enjoy it. It's kind of like Anthrax, SOB stuff. But, dude, Evil Army fucking destroys it. But look how much more, more popular Municipal Waste is. There's so many of these uh, newbie bands and popular bands with pants that blew up in the underground metal scene that Evil Army just 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 whips their fucking dick out and jacks off in these guys' fucking faces. They're not. It's not even a contest. But Evil Army had tons of fucking aggression and energy. Everything by the Army is good, but I'm just saying that I, I think the album's probably... Yeah, I'd say the full length is my favorite thing by them. Um, but then on the other hand, it's funny because... Doing thrash albums as well. Sorceress Bitch, the second album by Witch Trap, but it's kind of considered like the first full length. Witching Metal was kind of an EP, but at the same time, kind of a full length. It was shorter, but uh, I think it's like they, they, they kind of did like Sodom. Witching Metal is considered their EP, like in the Sign of Evil. And then um, Sorceress Bitch, the first full length. Whatever, how the fuck you want to look at it. Sorceress Bitch is my favorite thing by uh, Witch Trap. And again, again, I like everything by them as well. And to be honest, I think if I do my top 20, I think. Um, I think Sorcerer's Bitch would be in there, too. In my top 20 thrash albums of all time. That's another one, man. It fucking destroys all these wimp thrashers and just a lot of the stuff that people kind of deem as mandatory. Like, I, I, I'll go out and say it, dude. I think Witch Trap, Sorcerer's Bitch is better than most Sodom albums. Probably not better than, like, In the Sign of Evil, but plus why I like it better than Obsessed by Cruelty. That's for damn sure. Um, Obsessed is just kind of, like, it's just the songs are... They're just not memorable for my fault. Every time I listen, it's a new goddamn listen. I do like Persecution Mania a lot, Tapping the Vein, Agent Orange. It's awesome, but I don't know. I might I might like, the, uh, at least minimally that was Trap. I might like more, to be honest with you. I, I honestly might. And I know that's going to be fucking blasphemy in a lot of guys' eyes. But what's really cool about Witch Trap, too, is it's that total style. Dude, it's raw as fuck. Killer leads. It's got more, more of those fucking, you know, raspy, you know, satanic sounding vo vocals. Not this goddamn 12-year-old boy trying to do fucking... Uh, High school thrash fucking vocals, you know, the, the pussy shit. Um, so evil thrash, goddammit. But everything by Witch Trap is good as well. So if I had to take one, 
I'd probably take Witch Trap just because uh, their catalog. They have, what, were they five full lengths, six full lengths now? As opposed to Evil Army, they're dicking around doing fuck knows what. I mean, they have one full length and a, and a few EPs. I mean, been around for over 20 years now. Yeah, I think they started, what, 2000? Somewhere around there. Minimally, they've been around for 20 goddamn fucking years, and they they, they got one full length and a, and a few EPs. So, pussy fucking around, in my goddamn opinion. So, uh, catalog-wise, I would take the trap just because... Tuneskis wise I like them about even, but at least you get more goddamn tunes with the goddamn trap if you're going to that abandoned island if you want to take one goddamn catalog. So that, that's how that's how I would had to uh make that fucking call. Guns was the you know the but the guy about to get in the morning later, goddamn it.